Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, uh, welcome back to Mythgard in Middle-Earth. My name is Corey Olson, the Tolkien professor, and I am joined, as always, by my friend Grifflet, who is having the authentic Limlight Gorge experience here, uh, running as fast as he can away from gigantic mobs who are trying to kill him. Oh, he escaped. Look at that. What a, what a clever... Whoa. Hang on. There's another one right over there. Back slowly away from the gigantic spiders, Grifflet. Boy, that was easier to get away from than I fully expected there. Cool. Uh, so, oh, there she is. Okay. Kiriana is back. All right, where is she? There we go. No problem. I, I think Grifflet could have taken him. It was not... Uh, I, was, I don't think that was a... I don't think that was a problem. Okay. So, well, they're only an eighth of a million morale points only 10 times more morale point just just over just under 10 times as many um <clears throat> anyway cool so so welcome um i am uh i'm excited to be here today it's been a super busy week this week uh and it's really fun dealing you know spending my week i always i always look forward to uh i always look for, okay are we ready okay Hang on. Let's let's see. Can you can you actually technically stab a spider in the back? I can't possibly reach the physical back of the spider, right? Hang on. So I, wait, wait. I'm meant to do this first, right? Reveal weakness. Yeah. How about that? Look at that. I remembered to do the thing. <laughs> doesn't even once look over at me, right? I strike the first blow, and he's like, the spider's like, yeah, whatever. Okay. Um, so, uh, anyhow, right. Okay, so, um, as I was just saying, I always look forward to my Grifflet stream. I am in a season of my life right now, and so many things going on at Signum University uh, uh, that I run that... Um, I just, I don't have, I don't have time at all. I haven't played Lotro outside the stream, uh, in weeks now, sadly. Um, so I always look forward to this very much. It's my only time getting to play Lotro every week and I get to, I, I, I look for, I always love and look forward to sharing that with you guys. And I can tell you, boy, after a week of dealing with, you know, banks and, uh, you know, uh, state senators and their assistants. That's been another uh, fun thing for me uh, this past week. Um, you know, all of these like administrative things, uh, it is super fun to be able to come back and uh, play Lotro and have a, a, a totally free flowing Tolkien discussion with you guys. Um, that's. Uh, I, th I always, I always look forward to this. Tony, you know, Lotro time is kind of like office hours. That's what's really fun about it. So, I just got uh, out of uh, uh, Silm Film, which, by the way, it was funny. You know how uh, uh, Cord went super long today, which was awesome, because I was still broadcasting in my last uh, in my last broadcast until like ten after the hour. <laughs> so here I was afraid that you guys were all going to be waiting for me and disappointed and stuff and then I get up here and court is still going and I'm like yes! Anyway um okay oh and look it's a corpse just lying there um oh I see Kiriana's looting the corpse. Alright that's fine you can loot the corpse Kiriana you've totally earned it um anyway so uh um Okay, what do we have here? I got a punctured shield over here. Ooh, more ruins! Do you think the spiders are making off with the ruins, too? Anyway, so what I was saying, film film. So I was just doing film film projects, and we got, like, so off track today. You know, it's like I had some objectives of what we wanted to accomplish, and we accomplished not exactly nothing, but, like, pretty close to nothing. Um... When uh, uh, in, in the, of the things that we set out to discuss, because we got uh, wound up talking about all these other things, and um, my so okay, I can get Goans apparently from these guys. Um, anyway, so um, 
I, uh, I feel bad in a context like that, right, where there are particular things I'm trying to accomplish and, and I'm trying to put pressure on myself to stay on topic. But you know what? Here in, you know, my Lotro office hours, there's no such pressure. You know, I can just, we can talk about whatever you want to talk about. You can bring up whatever random Tolkien topic you guys want to discuss and it's cool. You know, it's fun. Uh, I really enjoy that. So, cool. Um, okay. Let's see. All right, boy. Poor Grifflet is not really TPSing this guy in a hurry. But he's tanking much more admirably. This spider is into you, Grifflet. That is unusual. Um. Okay. So I have one lore question from last time. Uh, that I want to... That is so, oh, no! What's going on here? Venomous Widows? Like... I was going to say... <laughs> is it bad that my first thought was, was, how can they be Widows? We haven't even, like, killed the big one yet. Um... Okay, so... Oh, dear. Oh, hey, you got some, what, glowing glands off of those guys? Where are they coming from? Are they just spawning over there? Are they emerging from this hole? Oh, the, oh, we want them for the quest, and they only turn up when we're fighting the huge... Okay, so, so there are ads for these big guys, and... But we need them for the quest. Okay. So they're a good thing. So it is to our advantage for me to take a really long time killing this big one like I am. Where's my cursor? Okay. Um, uh, so that we can get more of those other ones showing up. Okay. All right, cool. Got it. Good. So that's a good thing. I'm glad to hear that that's a good thing. Our, ooh, and we got a bloated gland from the big one, too. That's nice. Okay. Whew. All right, well, that was stimulating. Perhaps we should... Oh, there's another one. All right. Where's my treasure detector? I forgot to turn it on. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> freelancer, I am, I am trying to discipline myself into becoming more of a keystroke person in battle. Like I'm, I'm getting better at that. But um, do, actually, I don't even know this. So what keystroke commands do I use to like choose the fellowship maneuver? I don't even know that. I've literally never even heard that. So I, I have to keybind those specifically? Okay. Okay. Oh, ooh, hey, JJ has a C.S. Lewis question. Cool. In wake of my C.S. Lewis rant, uh, in which I threatened him with personal reply <laughs> reprisals <laughs> last week. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, okay, sorry. Uh, Lewis question. In the Voyage of the Dawn Treader, Lucy reads a wonderful story featuring a sword, a cup, a tree, and a hill. What are the odds that this story is The Hobbit? Low. Low. Um, I think that the story that Lucy reads is uh, an Arthurian story. I think it's like a Holy Grail story is really what it sounds like to me. Um, uh, I like that. I have to, I have to, JJ, admit with, oh wait, hang on, this one's coming right towards us rather than chasing the other one. Um, so, um, 
Why was only the other one making the ads? I haven't seen any of those little ones come along while we're fighting any of these guys. Do we have to be over by the by the webs? Is that the issue? Maybe maybe it's a web thing. Um. Anyway, uh, I do admit with embarrassment, I literally never thought of the Hobbit for there. That's kind of fun. Um. I. Uh, um. Yeah. So. Um. The, the number one thing it always made me think of is like, not that it's an Arthurian story, but that it is like one of the stories that lies behind King Arthur and uh, the uh, quest for the Holy Grail. That is like, it's it's one of the, the sort of Ur stories that, like the reason that stories of King Arthur and... Um, and the Knights of the Round Table and the, you know, the, the quest for the Holy Grail, the reason those stories are so popular and so uh, enduring is that um, they, in some sense, recall the mythic power of this story that Lucy read, like that she was reading the sort of the, the myth and archetype behind. Oh, this guy doesn't respawn? Really? Oh, man. Oh, here he is! Right on cue! That was thoughtful of him. Anyway, so that's how, that's how I've always read it, JJ, which I, I think is... Because, um, I mean, it, it certainly has that kind of element, right? Rather than... Oops, I'm sorry. I missed I'm talking instead of remembering to click on my fellowship maneuvers. Um, uh, rather than thinking of it as like a compliment to, you know, a story, which obviously Lewis genuinely admired... Um, you know, there's no question about that. Um, what he, you know, in, in thinking about the, the 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 place that that story occupies in Lewis's the, the Lucy the story that Lucy read that that story occupies in uh, in Lewis's imagination, I think that we we really need to be thinking in terms of um, sort of myth and archetype and things like that. Like this is um, the idea that a myth what makes a story mythical, right? What it means for a story to be a myth is that it in some sense um, connects us with the, um, it puts us into contact with something that is out there, something that is beyond the stories themselves, some kind of deeper or higher truth in some sense. Um, hey, I didn't even get a chance to do that one. What happened there? Um, uh, and that is always, I, I, I've always felt, is one of the primary um, functions or uh, uh, purposes of the story that Lucy reads out of the book. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, Freelancer, I do have a bunch of keys key mapped. Like, I do have... Uh, uh, like nearest and next foes and things like that, so that I can I can select foes more easily. That's definitely something that I that I, I key mapped pretty early on. The primary reason I have to confess that I've never even thought to key map fellowship maneuvers before is that I, hooray, hooray, we did it. Okay, is that I usually um, I'm not usually operating in a fellowship often enough, frankly. Uh, I, I, I solo uh, most of the time, uh, so uh, it never really occurred to me to do that. Okay, um, so uh, really good question, JJ. That's a really, uh, um, it's a really fun moment uh, in my second favorite Narnia book, so really happy to talk about that. Um, <laughs> JJ says, okay, so yeah, Aslan says he will tell Lucy the story himself uh, when she gets to his country, and I want to imagine him singing all the songs. So you just like to imagine uh, Aslan singing like Adder Cop and Tom Naughty? I can totally understand that. I would like to imagine that too. Uh, and now that you mention it, I, I think that I will enjoy imagining just that. Um, but... Uh, as, oops, are we kiting a horn? Didn't notice him. So let's see. I managed to escape. 
Um, a spider on foot pretty easily. Oops, I've come the wrong way around. Oh, uh-oh. Is he still chasing us? Boy, he's hoofing it. Okay. Is Kiana fine? Oops. Oh, no. oh. Oh, good. We got rid of the horn. Great. Okay. Um. Yeah. Whoa. Gah. Hmm. Lag at. I almost rivendelled the bridge. Okay. Phew. Um. All right, good. Oh, hey, Johannes, great to see you again. After your triumphant arrival at Exploring the Lord of the Rings on Tuesday, good to see you again here. And yes, this is a very much more Europe-friendly time, I know. Uh, it is uh, one of my regrets. I mean, not regret in the sense that I can do anything about it, because I can't. Uh, my time is restricted in part by my family's convenience. So when my... Uh, um, when my family is asleep has been uh, my primary streaming and class teaching time for many, many years now. Um, yeah, cool. Um, let's see. Okay. Make Ovanen. I gathered these samples. Sure did. Yeah. I hope I wasn't bitten. Nah, no threat of it, really. Um, a bite would likely be fatal. No, no, I mean, <clears throat> it was fine. I just shrugged them off. Uh... Okay, the samples I brought from the from the larger varieties of spider. Yeah, those were the larger varieties of spider. I agree, are dangerous, but you don't think they would harm an ant. The anodrum are quite resistant to such things, but this glowing venom. <clears throat> yeah, a much smaller variety of spider, the most potent you have seen, and so it's the little glowy ones who are only so it's it's the ads that are killing the ants. Wow. Okay, fortunately, with a pure sample available, you should be able to brew a draft that may help purge the venom from him. Okay, how is it that a spider came to possess such a venom? Seemingly meant to kill trees. Ooh, and a nodrum. Right, and how did this venom find its way into the water? Yes. Good. Okay, good question. We may want to ask the nodrum if they have seen these spiders lurking about. Yeah, let's get to the bottom of this. All right, Twist Root, what do you have to say to this? Okay, we have not had any spiders in these woods for many years, many long years indeed. There's bad blood between the ants and the spiders. <laughs> That's awesome! Bad blood between the ants and the spiders! Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? That's That's got to be an ungoliant in the Darkening of Valinor reference, right? Ever since a spider sucked the life out of the trees of Valinor, right? The ants find that hard to forgive. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Far back indeed. And by the way, that's about as close as the Lotro writers get to the Silmarillion, right? To like explicit Silmarillion references. That is to say, not very close, right? There's an implicit Silmarillion reference there. I love it. Awesome. Okay. I believe there were some years after the Men of the Sea and the Elves drove back the Old Darkness again, and not so long after the Gardens of the Ent Lives were weighed away. Oh, and then there's an Old Dark-Hearted Spider wove her lair not far from here. Oh... Ooh, there she waited, preying upon any so unfortunate as to wander in among her maze of webs. So like Shelob's generation? Or maybe the generation right after? Okay, there were few that came here. For the forest had been roused to great anger if the des after the desolation of the gardens. Right, yes, the brown lands, got it. Which we're going to be meeting soon, so right, okay. Many of those who had once lived near the forest had died in the war. Or been driven away. Sure. She grew ever more ravenous, and in time we discovered that she had even tried to slake her endless hunger with the living sap of the trees. Exactly. Did she put her beak to the... she make a wound in the tree and put her beak to the wound? But she did. Okay. We turned our anger upon her and her brood. We drove her out, brushing aside her webs as a child brushes aside cobwebs, and hounded her until she fled beneath the roots of the Misty Mountains. Hmm. Gurthul, huh? Okay, very interesting. All right. <clears throat> so. 
in the in the darkest part of old Fangorn. That is interesting, and I had been thinking of that. <clears throat> Looking at where we are here, of course, we're on the south side of the river, so we're over towards Fangorn, right, if we go out here. Yeah, where there's still all of Wildermore between us and Fangorn, so we're not really that close to Fangorn. Um, but we are very close to the Brownlands, so this area where we are right here this would be like a frontier country for the Ents, right? Um, in fact, one would even think that Ents who would live here are Ents who were deliberately choosing to live near the Entwives, right? Because the, the Brownlands over here, the, these were the gardens of the Entwives. So, or at least, even if they didn't live there then, would be living there now, right? That, like, in memory, essentially, of the Entwives. Okay. Um, okay. Very interesting. And I love the veiled Ungoliant references. Yes, the rivalry between spiders and trees goes back very far indeed. Okay, your deepest roots sicken. The water of the Wimwhite runs foul with venom. Okay. Graylim told me one long summer's day of a cave he discovered nearby where there was but a slender... when he was but a slender ending. Okay. Beneath the waters of the river. Okay. Oh, he was too big for the narrow ways. Got it. All right. Um. Okay. So some spiders probably... Sneaked down there. All right. Okay. Cool. Oh, ooh, is this an instance? Oh, no, wait. Your tale of wild trees on the far side. I was wondering if you were going to send us over to do something at the Huorns. It has been some time since a shepherd of the forest has been over there. They're like right there. Okay. You would have them rest and see their seedlings grow in a more peaceful place. So you want a few of their seeds. Okay. Fend them off and wear them down. And it'll fall asleep. <laughs> okay. If you say so. All right. Let's uh, discover the roots of Fangorn. Really? The roots of Fangorn? Are the roots of Fangorn this way? No? No. Whoa. Hang on. Okay. All right. Huge trees, as you might expect. Strange random rock, as you might not expect. Uh, uh, uh. Okay. A banded coffer? Really? It's weird. Is it on this side of the river? Huh. Can we get over there? No, don't think so. I guess I get to go down. Well, hang on a second. Wait. I'm a burglar. I'm forgetting myself. Okay. Oops. I'm just still going cross country here. Oh, oops. Forgot I can't say fall twice in a row. Okay.
It's not down here, is it? I love how when you break your ankle, your horse's ankle is automatically broken, too. Aha! Uh -huh. Look at the falls. Yeah, that's nice. Roots of Fangorn. Okay, let's do this. Oh, hey, apparently I'm not the fellowship leader, Kiriana. You've got to go in. Savior to the Roots of Fangorn? That's my deed? Slaves of the Spider Queen? Whoa, I get all these deeds. Defeat Gorthul. Kiriana, you're supposed to go in. I can't go in. It's locking me out. Oh, here we go. Okay. Oh, you transferred. Got it. Okay, that's good. Um, Roots of Fangorn. And it's level locked. Good. It's a six man. What could go wrong? We've got two. <laughs> right? Uh... Yeah, Hologrow, you want to join us? A tank might be handy. If we had a, if we had a Hologrow, then we'd have a tank and a healer. A tank, a healer, and a spectator. So that would probably be good, right? Yeah, so Hologrow, why don't you come in? And meanwhile, we can go over and play with horns while we're waiting for you to arrive. That sounds like a plan. Okay, cool. Yeah, let's do that. I have never done this instance. I've never seen this instance. Again, I said never really. I never really did. Uh... Okay, where's that horn that was chasing us around before? <laughs> That's the most delayed reaction ankle break I've ever had. Okay, let's see. Where? Oh, here's one. Right. Okay. Hi, I'm supposed to put you to sleep, Mr. Horn, sir. Yep. No problem. Okay. Well, exactly, Zach. See, I think I'm especially qualified to be a spectator uh, of this particular instance because I've never seen it before. I didn't even know this existed. So that's pretty exciting. It's what happens when you mostly solo and you come into the Limelight Gorge and get horribly maimed and so decide to not... <laughs> to, ex to exempt this area from your determination to uh, be a completionist in the Great River. In theory, that is how it may or may not play out, I suppose. Okay. Let's see, how grow are you in game now? Let me see. Oops. Oh, my O key is sticking. There we go. Oh, we're still loading. Okay, no problem. Okay. Oh, what isn't a spectator sport? Instances? They totally are. Aren't you feeling sleepy yet, Mr. Stalking Horn? Could have sworn you would be feeling sleepy by now. Oh, is that what they look like when they go to sleep? They keel over sideways. So when they keel over like that, they're not dying. They're just taking a nap. Okay. Sure. Sure. 
Hi, menacing horn. It's nap time. Nap time for the horns. Okay. <laughs> right. Let's see. Okay. I've got. Um... Oh, a question from Tony that I missed. Let's see. Uh, is it possible that Sauron was the one who spread whispers among the dwarves of Erebor that caused them to split up and some to go to Moria? That sounds a lot like what Melkor did in Valinor, telling the Noldor that they were hemmed in a narrow place. Um, uh, well, let me put it this way, Tony. That's totally how I think we should play it when we get there in some film. Let me just say that. Um, do I think there's any clear evidence to suggest that that was so? Not necessarily. I mean, I think that the, um, you know, sort of the unrest of the dwarves, you know, could be organic. Certainly, they don't need any um, real justification for their desire for Khazad Doom, right? I mean, that's... Uh, uh, you don't have to go far, you know, for an explanation for that, right? So, um, I, d I certainly don't think that the situation as it's described by Glow in there in the Council of Valorand dema demands that kind of explanation. But do I think it's compatible with it? Oh, yeah. No, as you say, the, that parallel works really, really well. So, um, I love it. Yeah, that, no, that's absolutely how I would want that to happen. Because uh, remember, Sauron, Erebor is of strategic significance. So uh, in Sauron's plans, I mean, you remember Gandalf's words in Appendix A. So um, he is definitely going to want to weaken it if he can. So, yeah, I really like that. Um, yeah, good. Um <laughs> um, Griffith's reputation with the trees is shaky right now, Phil. What is with, right now, really? I mean, I thought Griffith's reputation with trees had been shaky since he was like level nine or whatever it was, you know. No, oh. these guys are very conveniently regenerating. Okay. All right. I'll grow. Let's see. All right. There we go. There we go. We've got our tank. Tank, a healer, and a spectator. Will that be good? What do you think? Is that enough? I mean, I kind of thought two would probably be enough, but apparently I'm wrong about that. Okay. Um, why does Sauron attack Erebor and Dale in the War of the Ring? Um, wouldn't it have made sense to devote all his forces against Gondor, Zack asks. Um, yeah. Oh, Druid's Fire, you want a fourth? Oh, man, four people on a six? Man, that seems like overkill to me, but sure. No problem. You want all uh. Oh. Okay. So I thought I think I got you there. Yeah, I just just did. No, oh, hang on. No, I didn't because I mistyped it. Okay. There we go. All right. Oh, look okay. a captain and a guardian. Oh boy. We should be secure against any number of spiders. <laughs> okay. All right. I trust you, Hologro. Six man in the limb white gorge you think is nothing, nothing to mess around with. 
Uh, I get the impression that some of you, uh, that some of you enjoy surviving in this game more than I do. But uh, oh, there he goes. Oh, he just kind of sank down and went to sleep. Yeah. Oh, I was inside his mouth like, like Pippin and Old Man Willow there for a second. Okay, I still got one more time to, more time to hunt one more horn. Let's see. I don't see any more spawning over here. Okay. Um, oh, there he is. There he is. One more horn. Um, okay. Um, uh, oh, there was my cursor. Got it. Um... Oh, wait. Zach, did I answer your question? Oh, no. Why does he attack Erebor and Dale in the War of the Ring? Wouldn't it have made more sense to devote all his forces against Gondor? Um, couple ways to think about this question. First, uh, as Faramir observes, Although pride would suggest to the Gond would tell the Gondorians that, um, you know, Sauron is primarily interested in destroying them. The reality is they are only one of many objectives, right? And also keep in mind when Sauron deploys his armies, right? When he establishes, so Sauron has established his War of the Ring strategy, and he establishes that strategy prior to, obviously long prior to Aragorn's challenge to him or, you know, his suspicions about what may or may not be going on as far as the Ring of Power is concerned, right, uh, in Minas Tirith. So when he deploys his armies... Oh, darn it, he didn't drop a seed. Oh, come on, man. Um, so when Sauron deploys his armies, he's he's not thinking that way. So obviously attacking Gondor is important, and so he is going to you know focus a certain amount of energy on that. But he's not going to go all in, um, because another one of his primary objectives, of course, is the destruction of where he's. Because I mean, think about it. What is what is most threatening to Sauron? Right? What are the most threatening military objectives? Gondor is, of course, traditionally one of the strongest. Oh, well, here we go. Hang on. I think... There he is. All right. Um, Gondor is traditionally one of the strongest, but that's not even true anymore in the modern world. Like from, a, from a military standpoint, Gondor is very far, I think, from his greatest threat. What are his greatest threats? Sauron's greatest threats? And I think the answer is Lothlorien and Rivendell are his greatest threats. Right? Lothlorien, Rivendell, and the folks who live there. Well, Lothlorien, Rivendell, and Tom Bombadil, right? But he's not too worried about Tom Bombadil. Um, but anyway, so Gandalf explicitly puts the Erebor angle, like the Erebor front, uh, in uh, connection, in, in association with... Oh, would you start dropping seeds, who horns? Come on, you're killing me here. I guess I'm killing you technically. No, I'm putting you down for naps. Um, how many who horns do we have to put down for a nap before that third one will drop? Um, right, so Gandalf associates the Erebor front with Rivendell in particular. So, um, you know, therefore, I think it's safe for us to be thinking in those terms. Um, so when he originally deploys his armies, he's got some down in the south and he's got some up in the north. And, I mean, even the Gondor army, honestly, Minas Tirith isn't a threat to him. It's, it's a threat in the sense that it's one of the strongest places of his enemy, so he wants to take it. But it's not like they're going to mount an assault against him, right? Um, the, the elves could hurt him, you know? Galadriel, personally, is a threat to him. Um, 
so he's going to want to take Lothlorien. He's going to want to come on that from several times. So I kind of suspect, if I had to guess, oh, seriously, three non-drops in a row? If I had to guess um, what... Uh, I am in the right region, right? Yeah, barely. Um, if I had to guess what Sauron's overall military strategy was for the Lord of the Rings, it would go something like this. I would say... Um, oh, there he came. Uh, the armies, he's going to destroy Gondor, first of all, just in principle, because he does hate it, and he really does want to see that happen. Um, uh, so he's going to destroy Gondor on principle, but also as one of the strongest places which, you know, his enemies could defend and at which, you know, at the point at which many of his enemies might gather, right? So let's go through and let's plow up Gondor. Um, he's sending some orcs through to try to neutralize Rohan, right? Which will make a uh, destroying Gondor easier. But then, of course, once he destroys Gondor, he can move those armies up to help. He's going he's gonna to attack... Uh, the forest, right? So he's going to attack Lothlorien and Mirkwood um, with the army that we know that Celeborn and uh, uh, Thranduil destroy in the Battle Under the Trees. So so he's got that army coming in, but then the armies from the south, the armies that have destroyed the Rohan, like the armies that were in the Wold, remember, just south of Lothlorien, um, they could come north after Rohan is destroyed and after Gondor has been destroyed. And so he can catch Lothlorien between multiple armies and, you know, Galadriel's a big deal, but eventually he can take her out that way. But the northern armies, right, he just has to get past Erebor and then he can march his armies right around Mount Gudmad and into Eriador and uh, take out Rivendell. And for the love of... Who orange seeds? Oh. You know what? Um, I think I'm done with who orange seeds now. Let's go in the instance. Um, so uh, so anyway, yeah. So I think that he um, that was his, so that's why he's gonna he's totally still gonna attack Erebor because once he defeats once he goes through Erebor, um, then he can. Uh, then he can go and uh, uh, attack Rivendell with that army. So having taken out Rivendell and um, uh, having taken out both Rivendell and Lothlorien, then he's in a pretty good place, right? Quick question. Is this, this instance more than half an hour, do you think? More than half an hour? Not sure. If it's more than half an hour, I could be in danger here. I do have kids to pick up from school. Um, you don't think so? All right. Let's give it a shot. Uh, Woohoo! Let's do this. Yeah. Voice over. A dread spider queen long ago banished beneath right. the misty mountains sure. has returned to wreak oh vengeance upon the Ents of the forest. Even now uh. her brood poisons the roots of ancient Fangorn in caverns far below. Ancient Fangorn. I still don't understand why we're talk calling it that, because we're really still kind of pretty far from Fangorn. All right, but that's okay. All right, so she's taking vengeance against the ants who... Wait. We're done digging. Oh, there's how I go. Okay. So let's see. So I can just... I can start some fellowship maneuvers because I'm a burglar. It's the kind of thing I do. Right? That's if I get a chance. Or alternatively, I can look at the surroundings. Yes. Okay, so the Ents were digging. Oh, hang on, no, don't, don't, don't attack anybody. Uh, uh, her legginess has gone upstairs to have a little nibble. Okay. I want to see the. I want to see the the discussion. Once she's done, she said she ain't got no use for us. Does that mean we can go? If 
she ain't got no more use for us hands. Someone's putting it together. What's to keep her brood from coming back down here and nipping the lot of us? Ah, a question to be asked. <laughs> what about it, boss? Uh oh. Yeah, her legginess is going to come down. Her legginess, I don't know. Not sure I can approve of that title. Okay, we're good. No, we can't cut through there anyway. All right, no problem. Let's see. So this is an old mine? Or is it a new mine? Nice little orc skull candelabra there. Okay. The biggins. You can't cut their webs with a sword. Ah! Okay, that's very Sheila-like. Them's the ones you gotta watch out for. Right. Okay, well that was a... Oh, shoot. I didn't see that they're just about to begin another conversation. Darn it. Huh. Okay. Um. So good, good job, guys. Here, oh, that's, what's going on? Okay, so if they built these mines, then these wooden beams would be very recent. I wonder if there's going to be any pelvis fires. Uh, okay, now this is a mine door. Now what's over here? Oh, a sleepy stone troll. We don't have to. We don't. Have, it's a dead end, right? I don't think we can. We don't have to bother him, right? Okay. If he's really sleepy. Oh. Fresh kill, I mean, fresh cool. Okay. All right, so we have an orc boss. Hi. You guys going to talk or anything? Can we, anything we can overhear? Wow, this guy looks just like Mazog. <laughs> Zach says he's already asleep. You're right, no, no need to put him down for a nap. Okay. Anyone who lets one by is chow for her legginess. Where's he going? Panicked goblin? Why is everybody running away? <laughs> Oops. <laughs> I'm just looking around spectator. That's my job. Oh. Hang on, here we go. Hooray! Why do I think that Shelob had an Anglo-Saxon based name instead of... Uh oh Here we go. Okay. Yoo-hoo! Good question. Hmm. Like <laughs> I'm out of space. <laughs> of course. That's okay. Oh man, my inventory. Oh. Dear my inventory, my poor inventory. Okay. All right, phew. Okay. 
Um, don't know, Tony. Um, I agree. That seems like an inconsistency. I mean, the question would have been, who would have named her Shelob, right? Who would have called her Shelob? Um, which is Anglo-Saxon in its origin. Um, Hmm. Nice. Um, yeah, nobody. I mean, if it's what the Gondorians could, certainly the, her name isn't going to be derived from any, uh, any name that like the Rohirrim gave her, certainly. Even Even the Gondorians themselves don't seem to retain much memory of her. We have to get this one in order to get through. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. No, I do remember about the delay. Oh, hey. Are these the ones that freak the or orcs out? And we can't cut the webs with swords. Which is a pretty good indicator, right? I mean, that's a pretty good indicator that these are Shelob generation because uh, the webs that the Merkwood spiders used could certainly be cut with knives and things. Um, so... Did that automatically part? Yes, it did. Oh, are we good? Coming? We're all coming. Okay. Um, but of course, as we're calling the exit to Shelob's lair. And that's, I guess, what these are. Right. The webs that can't be cut. Web tender. All right. Whoa! Oh, it's not bigger than usual. It's just behind me. Yeah, you can come over here and say that. I'm gonna take you out, Mr. Hunting Spider. Another Narnia question, JJ. All right. If there were a Narnia MMO, what time period should it be set in? Ooh, yeah. Chronology would be the challenge there, right? Um, but honestly, I think there can really only be one answer to that question. If you have to choose a time frame, it has to be the Golden Age, doesn't it? I mean, wouldn't you have to do a Narnia MMO during the reign of the Four Pevensies? I mean, you could do it at other times, but any other choice would seem totally random, you know? Um, that's the only non-random seeming time that you could, uh, that you could choose. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I, I think you, I, I think you'd have to say, uh, you'd have to say Golden Age. Ooh, who's that over there? A venomous spiderling? Hmm. Ooh. This guy's lootable. He's lootable with icky filth? Really? Wait, what am I supposed to get? Forest roots poisoned. Oh. Zero of six forest roots poisoned. Okay. Um. Oh, here's some forest roots. Are the forest roots going to attack us? Roots like that have never done me any favors, I can tell you. 
Hi. Are you friendly, Roots? <gasps> Who dares interrupt me? Dialogue. Pay for slaughtering my children and depriving them of sustenance. Just as the ants shall pay for driving me from my forest so long ago, sap and blood alike shall course with the venom of my brood. Okay. Whoa. Come, my children. That can't be good. All right, here we go. Oh, she is ugly. See, the Golden Age was pretty peaceful, but JJ, when you think about it, so first of all, you can... The Golden Age of Narnia is the only one that it would allow you to do even two books, right? Because you get the horse and his boy in there too, right? So you could you could you could have, um, you could choose a, a part of the Golden Age. And remember, there's there's stuff going on, right? There's the they've got the, um, you know, you could do stuff out on the Lone Islands. You can do, um, you know, so you can have voyages. So you actually could incorporate some of the Don Treader material. Um, by uh, uh, by by having them sail on an expedition, uh, you know, it wouldn't be under the same circumstances, and maybe you wouldn't go quite as far. But you could totally do some of that, right? And um, uh, I think we're meant to stop them poisoning the roots. Just a theory. I think that's what's going on there. Um, hooray! Woohoo! Um, so yeah, so you could, you could, you could sail out, you know, uh, to the east. And so therefore, um, not, uh, not lose all the Dawn Treader material. You could obviously, you know, have connections to the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, and you'd have the Pevensies. And not only the Pevensies, but you'd have Mr. Tumnus, you'd have, um, uh, you'd have, uh, uh, like the Beavers, there's, you know, there are lots of like of you know people that you could build you could uh set the stage for reaper cheap though you might you wouldn't have reaper cheap himself obviously um but you know you could have the beginning of the talking mice obviously um so and then you could uh and obviously as i say you can get um ark and land and you, you can you can do the whole horse and his boy plot and you've got you've got uh you know tashban and um uh and that whole thing, you know, so you can do the Callerman, some Callerman stories, and you get slave trade uh, with the Lone Islands and stuff. So you've got you've got you've got those those things. Um, you could do. I would think you know, fill any Jadis material that you get. You could do in something like session play, right? But I mean, think about that. That'd be easy, right? You could do a session play. Good. You, you could do like a Diggory and Polly session play to get Magician's nephew material in there when you, you know, are told the story of the founding of Narnia and all that kind of thing. So you could, so you could do Magician's nephew material in session play. Um, so the only material from the whole series that you couldn't get if you placed the um if you placed uh the mmo in the golden age would be prince caspian and the silver chair and the last battle obviously unhatched spider egg oh it's a it's a rep item okay what how did i have space for that oh because the relic stacked nice okay um, did the Telmarines exist at that time? Sure. Yeah, JJ, you could, you could have like the first arrival of the Telmarines, right? Maybe. I mean, you could stretch a point so that the land of Telmar existed already. Um, yeah, I think you could do that. And so therefore you could kind of work your way into some proto- Prince Caspian material. But anyway, that's, I, I think, I think that seems to me, I mean, really kind of a no-brainer. I mean, what else would you do? Like during the reign of Caspian, conceivably you could do during the reign of Caspian. That would be the second choice, I would think. But um, everything else, you would be missing out on a lot of opportunities, I think. I guess the other choice would be to, like, right before the last battle so that you could have everything else in the series historical. But anyway... 
Um, <laughs> the Tell Marines material would be DLC. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, okay. Anyway, awesome. I should probably call, call it a day here. Um, I got what we needed to get, right? We finished that, so I can just leave the instance. Thank you, From Wolf and Hologrove, for helping out. That was very helpful. Uh, and uh, that would be a. Uh, yeah, that was great. So thank you, thank you very much for your assistance. Um, I do have to run because, uh, as always, my kids are expecting me, and I don't want to leave them on the sidewalk. Um, so I will, uh, I will sign off here. I will be back next week. What is today? Today is the, what is today even? I don't even know. The seventh. Yeah. So we've got, oh yeah, we've got two more weeks ahead of us here. So I'll be back next week and the week after that, and then we'll miss the twenty eighth obviously. But other than that, I think we should be good. So thanks everybody for joining me and I look forward to seeing you guys next week. Bye now. Thanks for joining in on my rambles around Standing Stone's brilliant digital adaptation of Tolkien's world. If you enjoy these adventures, please consider supporting this and other entertaining educational programming by donating at signumuniversity.org fund.